Assalamualaikum. Welcome to Millennium TV News. This is Ishwa Jahan with top stories. U.S. clock boy meets U.S. President Barack Obama. U.S. and Russia sign deal to avoid Syria air incidents. Paul Ryan will run for House Speaker if party unites. Canada election liberals sweep to power. UN chief appeals for calm during visit to Jerusalem. Xi Jinping visit, UK-China ties will be lifted to new height. Now the detail. The Muslim teenager who was arrested when his teacher mistook his homemade clock for a bomb has met President Barack Obama. 14-year-old Ahmed Mohammed was catapulted to fame after his case in Texas went viral on social media, winning sympathy from the White House to Silicon Valley. The BBC's Barbara Plitt Usher chronicles his journey from the classroom to astronomy night at the White House. Russian began air strikes in Syria on 30th September, saying it was targeting Islamic State militants. Last week, the U.S. said both countries' planes entered the same battle space and came within miles of each other. Officials had been seeking an agreement since last September. Pentagon spokesman Peter Cook said the text of the deal would remain secret at Moscow's request, but that it laid out means for both sides to communicate and establish a hotline on the ground. The two countries would not, however, share intelligence on their targets, he said. Mr. Cook also said the deal ensured aircraft would stay a safe distance from each other, but he would not confirm if specific distances were agreed. Mr. Ryan, who ran as Mitt Romney's vice presidential candidate in 2012, is seen as his party's best hope to elect an effective congressional leader. A group of ultra-conservative House members have recently rebelled against party leaders. House Speaker John Bonner resigned last month under pressure. Mr. Bonner's hand-picked successor, House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, withdrew from consideration after it was clear he did not have the support of the ultra-conservative bloc known as the Freedom Caucus. Freedom Caucus, a group of about 30 to 40 members, demanded key concessions from Mr. McCarthy. The California representative reportedly said he could not effectively lead the House under those conditions. The very public party in fighting has been seen detrimental to the Republicans' goal of retaining control of Congress and retaking the White House in 2016. We as a conference should unify now. Mr. Ryan told reporters on Tuesday after meeting with House Republicans, What I told members is if you can agree to those requests and if I can truly be a unifying figure, then I will gladly serve. And if I'm not unifying, that is fine as well. I'll be as happy to stay where I am. A Pentagon statement said the strike killed in a Saudi national called Sanafi al Nasser. The statement said he had funneled money and recruits to Al-Qaeda and had helped its operation in the West. Some reports of deaths of leaders in the Khorasan group have turned out to be false. In July, the U.S. said it had killed the leader of the group, a Kuwaiti called Musin al-Fadli. He had previously been reportedly killed in 2014. The Pentagon had said Sanofi al Nasser had moved funds from donors in the Gulf region into Iraq and then to Al Qaeda leaders. He organized and maintained routes for new recruits to travel from Pakistan to Syria through Turkey. It went on. The Syria Observatory for Human Rights, a UK based activist group, reported that he had been killed on Friday in Aleppo province. The Khorasan group, unnamely apparently coined by the U.S., is believed to be made up of veteran militants from Afghanistan and Pakistan, which jihadists refer to as Khorasan, as well as North Africa and Chechnya. They are thought to have embedded themselves within Al-Qaeda's local affiliate, the Al-Nusra Front, 
and obtained land and buildings in its strongholds. U.S. officials say the group has not been sent to fight the government of President Bashar al-Assad, but to develop external attacks, construct and test improvised explosive devices and recruit Westerners to conduct operations. The centrist liberals led by Justin Trudeau started the campaign in a third phase, but in a stunning turnaround now command a majority. Mr. Trudeau, the 43-year-old son of late Prime Minister Pairi Trudeau, said Canadians had voted for real change. Incumbent Conservative Mr. Stephen Harper, in power since 2006, has congratulated his rival. Justin Trudeau is son of late Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, considered the father of modern Canada. He informed U.S. President Barack Obama of his decision hours after leading his Liberal Party to victory in the polls. As part of his election campaign, Mr. Trudeau pledged to bring home the CF-18 fighter jets that were deployed to the region until March 2016. He has not yet given a time scale. Justin Trudeau's Liberals swept to power in Monday election, ending nearly a decade of conservative rule under Stephen Harper. Mr. Trudeau, an ex-high school teacher, is the eldest son of late Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. The power already applies to under 16s and will be extended to 16 and 17 year olds as well, David Cameron is to say. He will also say that anyone with a conviction for extremist activity will be automatically barred from working with children and vulnerable people. Labour says the Prime Minister must ensure measures are not heavy handed. Parents of children aged under 16 have had the power to request the withdrawal of passports in the start of a trial scheme in July, and according to Downing Street, it has already been used several times. The aim of the policy is to stop young people traveling to join terror groups such as so-called Islamic State overseas. The new vetting rules would apply to anyone coming into contact with children or vulnerable people, including volunteers, and would see extremists treating in a way as the same way as sex offenders. He told reporters in Jerusalem it was not too late to avoid a broader crisis. Mr. Ban spoke soon after police said a Palestinian drove his car into a group of Israelis in the occupied West Bank, injuring a soldier and a civilian. Eight Israelis and more than 40 Palestinians, including attackers, have been killed in recent weeks. The upsurge in violence began last month when tensions at a flashpoint holy site in Jerusalem revered by Jews and Muslims boiled over amid rumors that Israel planned to relax long-standing rules to strengthen Jewish rights at the complex. Israel has denied such claims. The UK and China were becoming more interdependent and a community of shared interests, he said on the first full day of his four-day visit. At a Buckingham Palace banquet, the Queen has said this was a very special year for our bilateral relationship. The visit comes amid job losses in the UK steel sector with cheap Chinese imports among factors being blamed. Tata Steel has announced the latest in a series of cuts with 1,200 jobs going down at its plant in Scunthorpe and Lanarkshire. Prime Minister David Cameron has said he will raise the steel issue in talks with Mr. Z. Addressing peers and MPs in the Royal Gallery at Westminster, the Chinese leader said that although his visit had just started, he was deeply impressed by the vitality of China-UK relations. Although China and UK are located at opposite ends of the Eurasian continent, we have a long shared deep mutual affection, he said. President Xi and his wife Peng Liwen had travelled to Clarence House to meet the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall for tea. He later met the Duke of Cambridge at Buckingham Palace ahead of the state banquet. At the banquet, the Queen held the milestone visit of President Xi and declared Anglo-Chinese ties were being taken to ambitious new heights. She praised the country's rapid development which had lifted hundreds of millions out of poverty and said the relationship between the UK and China was now a truly global partnership. Earlier, President Xi was welcomed by the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh and Mr. Cameron during the ceremony in Horse Guards Parade while a 41-gun salute was held in nearby Green Park. Viewers will take a short break. Stay with us. We are back here in a moment with the headlines here. Syria conflict air strikes kill 40 IS militants. Israel Palestinian violence Israeli killed in Beersheba bus station attack. 
Egypt votes in long delayed parliamentary elections. Head of India's BGP rebukes politicians in beef row. Live in Bangladesh with confidence. Let's move to the next news. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said a convoy of 16 vehicles was hit as it drove through an eastern part of Hama province overnight. The observatory's head said the planes would be Russian or Syrian but were not from the US-led coalition. Rami Abdul Rahman told charred bodies of fighters were at the scene. The observatory, which monitors the conflict in Syria using a network of sources on the ground, said the convoy was traveling from the ice de facto capital of Raqqa when it was attacked. Russia began its airstrikes over Syria at the end of last month, saying they were targeting ICE and other militant groups opposed by the regime of President Bashar al-Assad. The U.S.-led coalition, which has been carrying out its own airstrikes against ICE, has said it will not be cooperating with Russia's mission. Israeli police say the attacker thought to be Palestinian was killed. Eight Israelis have died in attacks by lone Palestinians this month. More than 40 Palestinians, including several attackers, have been killed. The upsurge began and tensions at a flashpoint holy site in East Jerusalem. Israeli security forces have imposed tighter restrictions in Jerusalem and the West Bank and there have been clashes with Palestinian protesters. Israel has begun erecting a 5-meter-high concrete barrier between the Palestinian district of Zabal Mukaber in East Jerusalem and the neighboring Jewish Arman Hanadzeb. Israeli officials in Jerusalem insisted the wall was a temporary measure in an area where there is a history of rock and mortal of cocktail throwing at Jewish homes and vehicles. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is to meet Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and separately Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas this week in a bid to help restore calm. They are the first such election since the previous chamber was dissolved by a court ruling in 2012. The authorities say the poll is the final step in a transition to democracy. However, critics say that candidates are supporters of President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi and the new parliament is likely to strengthen his control. President Sisi is a former general who led the 2013 military overthrow of Islamist President Mohammad Morsi following months of unrest. Mr. Morsi's party, the Muslim Brotherhood, won about half the seats in the last parliament but is now banned and its leaders are in jail. Some facing death sentences. By contrast, many figures from the regime of deposed autocrat Hosni Mubarak are on the ballot paper, says the BBC's Orla Guerin in Cairo. One of them had remarked those eating beef should be executed even though it is not illegal. In recent weeks, three Muslim men have been killed by Hindu accusing them of eating or smuggling beef. Most Hindus believe cows are sacred, but many do eat beef, as do Muslims and Christians. Another of those believed to have been scolded by Mr. Shah had dismissed the lynching of a Muslim man accused of eating beef as an accident. Mohammed Akhlaq was lynched in the town of Dadri in the province of Uttar Pradesh last month. In the past two other weeks, Muslims have been killed in Hindu nationalist violence over the issue. Angered at this and other Hindu nationalist trends, in recent weeks more than 220 Indian writers have relinquished other literary awards. Angered at this and other Hindu nationalist trends, in recent weeks more than 20 Indian writers have relinquished their literary awards. But Prime Minister Narendra Modi said this administration is not to blame for the deaths and has accused the opposition of indulging in what he calls the politics of polarization. The Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has urged all members of the Hindu community to with confidence in Bangladesh and said all religions speak about humanity. And her government has established that principle in Bangladesh by ensuring equal rights for people of all faiths. The PM has said this while visiting the Dhakeshwari Mandir and Ram Krishna Mission in Dhaka on the occasion of Durga Puja, the biggest festival of the Hindu community in Bangladesh. PM Sheikh Hasina said the government will not tolerate chaos, killing, militancy and terrorism. We want people of all religion to live in Bangladesh in peace. Members of the Hindu community are also the children of this soil. You will live here with confidence. You belong here, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina said. 
She also mentioned that Bangladesh believes in the peaceful coexistence of all people and said that all religion talks about tolerance. Sheikh Hasina said that people from all religions made their ultimate sacrifice for Bangladesh during the Liberation War of 1971. Secularism was dropped from the country's constitution after father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, was assassinated, the PM said. Ram Krishna Mission Principal Dhruve Sananda also spoke at the program held at Ram Krishna Mission. Viewers, now the business news. The investment bank is being split with several senior bankers departing. The chairman Paul Akleitner described it as a fundamental reorganization that required height of dis the chairman Paul Akleitner described it as a fundamental reorganization that required tough decisions. New boss John Crane is under pressure to reform Deutsche following a series of scandals. Earlier this year, the bank was fined $2.5 billion for its role in the labor rigging affair. The fine resulted in co-chief executive Jorgen Fischen and Anshu Zain resigning in June to be replaced by Mr. Crane. As part of the drive to simplify the management structure, the investment bank sales and trading activities will become part of a new division called Global Markets. It will be run by Garth Ritchie, head of Deutsche's equities business. The corporate and investment banking division will be headed by Jeff Arwin, a Briton from Deutsche Post earlier this year from JP Morgan. Colin Fan, the co-head of the investment bank and an ally of co-chief executive Anshu Zain will leave. A video in which he warned investment banking staff against being boastful, indiscreet and vulgar became a viral hit last year. The head of the Deutsche's wealth management business, Michael Faisola, will be replaced by Quentin Prince, a former BlackRock manager, Stefan Leitner, Stefan Krauss and Henry Ricciotte will leave the management board. The growth rate is below the government's 7% target. Though slightly above expectations, the data is expected to raise pressure on policymakers to step up monetary policy to stem the slowdown. China's economy has been hit by extreme stock market volatility over the summer and weak economic data causing concern on markets around the world. The latest growth figure for July to September come on the heels of a slew of disappointing data out of China. Earlier in the month, manufacturing data suggested the sector continued to contract for September. Imports saw a sharp fall for the past month while inflation eased by more than expected, adding to fears of rapid slowdown in the world's second largest economy. China has been attempting to shift from an export-led economy to a consumer-led one. Although the stiff fall in imports suggests domestic demand is not as strong as the government would have hoped, in the second quarter growth had still managed to beat expectations, coming in at 7% from the previous year matching growth in the first three months of the year. Economists are, however, continuing to call for more government action as vo volatility in the stock market sparks concerns of financial turmoil and potential social unrest. Viewers, now the sports news. World football's governing body, FIFA, has confirmed it will hold the election for its next president at the Special Congress on 26 February. The election will determine who will succeed Steve Blatter, who has been president since 1998. Blatter 79 and Vice President Michael Platini have both been suspended for 90 days amid corruption allegations, which both men deny. Platini is seeking the next presidency as is Prince Ali bin Al Hussein. Frenchman Platini, president of European's football governing body UEFA, submitted his candidacy papers earlier this month. But FIFA says it cannot recognize its candidacy while his ban is in place and he cannot campaign. However, FIFA's electoral committee says it may allow him to stand if his suspension ends before the election date. Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa of Bahrain is expected to contest the election. Former Trinidad and Tobago midfielder Navid Knockhead said he will stand, while ex Tottenham defender Ramon Vega is considering doing likewise. South Korean Chang Mong Soon, another confirmed candidate, claimed his campaign has been sabotaged by a six year ban from FIFA's Ethics Committee. Former Pakistan fast bowlers Wasim Akram and Shweb Akhtar, who were part of official broadcasters' commentary team for the ongoing India-South Africa series, will return to Pakistan and will not be available for the last two ODIs, according to reports.
The development comes amid security concerns from ICC in the wake of Shiv Sena threat against Pakistan cricketers and officials participating in any activity in Mumbai. According to sources, Akram and Akhtar pulled out on their own and there was no pressure from anyone as it was about threat perception. The ICC made the decision following Monday's incident in Mumbai where a group of Sena activists stormed the Board of Control for Cricket in India offices and threatened to prevent the umpire from standing in the 5th ODI on Sunday. Manohar and Khan were to discuss the resumption of the inter-park cricket ties and unofficial talks might held in Delhi tomorrow. The ICC on Monday withdrew Pakistan umpire Alim Dar from officiating in the remaining two matches of the ongoing Wonder Series between India and South Africa in the wake of Shiv Sena, Hiraugoing BCCI Chief Shashank Manohar forcing cancellation of talks with PCB Chief Shahriar Khan. Dar, a member of the elite panel of ICC umpires, had officiated in the first three matches and was also scheduled to umpire in the fourth and fifth ODIs in Chennai and Mumbai on October 22nd and 25th, respectively. Under the present circumstances, it will be unreasonable to expect from Ali that he will be able to perform his duties to the best of his abilities. As such, he has been withdrawn and his replacement will be announced in due course, an ICC spokesman said. Viewers, let's have a look at Millennium TV News Recap. U.S. Clock Boy meets U.S. President Barack Obama. U.S. and Russia sign deal to avoid Syria air incidents. Paul Ryan will run for House Speaker if party unites. Canada election liberals sweep to power. UN chief appeals for calm during visit to Jerusalem. <music> Xi Jinping visit, UK-China ties will be lifted to new height. You are up to date with our top stories so far here on Millennium TV and don't forget to log into www.millenniumtv.net. Thank you and stay with Millennium TV. Allah Hafiz.